for questions uh, and hold them to the Q&A section. Now I'll turn it over to Julian so he can get the presentation started. Good afternoon, Margaret. Um, thank you so much and good afternoon, everyone to all uh, our suppliers as well as colleagues from uh, local uh, agencies as well who are attending this presentation. Um, today is a pleasure to, uh, to start our last, uh, last presentation, day three of uh, our business information, information session. And today is about a payment. So um, I'm gonna start with some preliminary notes. I'm gonna go over the agenda and the speakers. Um, you will see that part one will be about city's payment process. Part two will be uh, uh, submitting uh, an invoice in the yeah, supply portal. And part three, uh, we'll talk about DB monitoring. We'll conclude and follow a presentation with a Q&A uh, session. So uh, please keep all your questions ready for that section at the end. We'll use the, the chat feature to uh, read your questions and we'll be happy to answer any of them. So preliminary notes. Um, the Bureau of Purchasing serves as the uh, central uh, authority for all city departments, boards, and commissions procurement and purchasing needs. Our mission is to serve the public by modernizing procurement and contracting procedures implementing a fair and transparent procurement process while engaging local businesses and maximizing purchasing value by applying the best procurement practices. Today, we are joined by a colleague from the Bureau of Accounting. The Bureau of Accounting is responsible for recording the city's financial activity, inclusive of general funds, grant funds, capital funds, and specialized revenue funds, maintaining the centralized accounting system, payroll preparation for all city employees, processing payments for citywide purchasing and issuing required financial statements. And our other participant today is the Office of Supply Diversity. Said office oversees certification, compliance, outreach, training, and capacity building for the city's Equal Business Opportunity Program. Said program is designed to mitigate the effects of past and present social disadvantage, economic disadvantage, and discrimination by increasing the utilization of certified DBEs in the procurement of goods and services by the city of New Orleans. Our agenda and our speakers. Part one, the city's payment process will be presented by Ms. Frida Richardson, controller and head of the Bureau of Accounting, and joined by myself as the Chief Procurement Officer and the Head of the Bureau of Purchasing. Part two will be the submission of an invoice to the other supplier portal, which will be presented by Ms. Tanika West, Purchasing Agent Assistant for the Bureau of Purchasing. And part three, uh, DB Monitoring Presentation by Matthew Cullinan, Compliance Officer with the Office of Supply Diversity. So let's get started with part one, City's Payment Process. And I have the pleasure to introduce you to Ms. Frida Richardson, who is going to start this, this presentation. Good afternoon, everyone. How are you? Thank you for joining us. We will get started with the city's payment process. And we're going to cover some basic questions for you. What are the main features of the payment process? What do I submit to the city? When do I submit an invoice? What are the most common mistakes? Do you have tips to successfully submit an invoice? And why do I need a purchase order or a contract to get paid? So let's break uh, the answers down for you for these. So what are the main features of the payment process? Supplier versus vendor. So the city pays vendors. A supplier um, registers in a supplier portal and a vendor is a person or a company who first registered as a supplier and received at some point a purchase order or a contract. Now, a PO or contract are very critical to the payment process, and Julian will explain this for us later in the presentation. Electronic submission. So as you all know now, we have our brand new system, Brass. And the implementation of this new financial platform helped us modernize our business processes with the electronic submission of invoices, eliminating the submission via mail or hand delivery that I know we're all used to. 
And as well, we now have the ability to pay vendors directly to their bank accounts instead of waiting for a check in the mail. So the payment options are either a check or ACH. You can go into the supplier portal and put in your ACH information to receive an ACH. If not, you will get a regular check in the mail. Now, net 30 from the date of invoice is that our standard payment terms are net 30 from the date of the invoice issued by the vendor. So whatever the invoice date is on your invoice, not the date that you submit that invoice in the portal, is the net 30 terms from the invoice date. Lastly, we have the matching approval processes, three-way versus two-way. Three-way um, concerns our POs and um, purchases of goods, and two-way is services and contracts. So if the city purchases goods, the city follows the process of matching the invoice, purchase order, and receiving report to validate the details of a purchase before making a payment. This is called the three-way match. When a city purchases services, the city follows a two-way match. There's no receiving report, but the department must approve the invoice submitted through the service invoice approval IPA that we have within the BRAS system. Now we will go to the next slide. What do I submit to the city? So let's discuss the submission. Okay. Wait, are we? No, slide 11. Sorry, slide 11. Yes. What do I submit to the city? So one invoice in electronic format per submission. So first, you can only submit one invoice at a time. We will not review multiple invoices submitted at once, and it must be in PDF format. Other formats will not be accepted. So if you have multiple invoices that you need to submit, you can submit them, but they must be submitted one at a time. And then they need to be attached to either the PO or the service contract, whichever one you have available for you in the supplier portal. The minimum required information is the name of vendor, date of invoice, invoice number, amount, PO, or contract number. Um, and finally, the potential additional information would be department and our contract may require to submit supporting documentation with invoice. So back to the first bullet point, when it says one invoice in electronic format per submission, we need all the documentation that you need to submit that invoice in order for it to be reviewed and paid by your department to be submitted with that invoice. So if it's the invoice and about 10 or 12 backup documentation, your PDF should be the total of those 14 pages as one PDF document that will be entitled your invoice. And so that is how you would submit your invoice to get paid by the city. Now we'll move on to the next slide. When do I submit an invoice? So we want to share with you some of the most common mistakes. Sorry, that's me. The timing of the invoice submission is important. It is standard to submit an invoice to right after delivering the goods or rendering the services. You do not need to wait for the department to tell you to submit it. Some exceptions may apply in very specific scenarios. Um, in some instances, your contract may contain a provision which tells you when you must submit it. For example, the city requires service providers to submit an invoice 10 calendar days following the end of the period covered by the invoice. So if that invoice period is for the month ending, we're coming up on a month ending of May. So that's May 31st. Your contract may stipulate that you submit your invoice by June 10th, 10 days after the end of the month of the services. So whatever your contract says, that's the date that you would submit. Also meaning that the invoice date for that invoice 
would be June 10th. It would not be May 31st. Now in the um, breakout of the invoice, please put that these are for services rendered for the month of May or for May 2021 services, please put that information. But your invoice date should be the exact date that you are submitting the invoice. So if your contract stipulates that you have up until the 10th day or to submit it by the 10th day, that is the invoice date that should be on your invoice. Also read very carefully your contract or purchase order because it may contain a performance criterion regarding the invoice submission. It could be a factor for termination if you fail to comply. What are the most common mistakes? And we really wanna help you with this. Um, so first is multiple invoices under one submission. We went through that, right? Um, only one invoice per submission. You can sit there and if you're a vendor that has goods to where you are uploading 10 invoices, do not put those 10 invoices as one PDF. You need to put, and, and the reason we're telling you this is because the system is set up so discreetly that we are checking your invoice numbers and your invoice dates. So you cannot contain more than one invoice in a submission because we won't be able to verify all of those invoices that you're putting in the packet. So you need to invoice, you need to submit one invoice with that unique identifier of that invoice number per submission. And then everything will go smoothly from there. A missing purchase order or contract number. This is pertinent as well. Um, we have vendors that will have several POs that are open at the same time, right, for goods. You may have one PO that's issued to you per department. So it, it's very critical that you have that PO number and our contract number, if we're talking about services, that you have that number listed on your invoice as well, because this will allow the department, when the invoice goes through the system and when Ms. Tanika gets to that part, you'll see it routing through the system. It's pertinent for them to be able to know that the invoice that's being submitted is truly for that department. So we're gonna need that purchase order number and I mean, or that contract number listed on your invoice. Missing invoice number is huge, right? We cannot fully document what we're paying you if there's not an invoice number. No invoice number means no payment because we cannot um, accept this payment. The system will not even allow it to go through the system um, without, so you can physically type your invoice number in the field because it requires that. But when it comes through the system, if we do not see that same invoice number listed on the actual invoice you've uploaded, we are going to have to reject that invoice and the department will contact you to let you know, we need you to resubmit this invoice for us because the invoice number on the physical document you uploaded does not match the physical invoice number that you typed in the supplier portal for submission. Using incorrect supplier account. Please, please, please <laughs> make sure that you are using the correct supplier account that has the correct PO or the correct contract number that you are invoicing, submitting your invoice against. Submitting invoice against wrong purchase order or contract will slow you down from payment because we are verifying, that's why we're asking for your physical invoice to have that documentation on it. We need invoice number, we need PO number, we need contract number. If we do not have these pieces of information, we need this in order to verify that this is a well-documented invoice that the city has procured with you so that we can make the payment process much easier. Uploading a Word or Excel document instead of a PDF format will get you rejected. We do not accept Word, we do not accept Excel. We need a PDF document because the, those other a Word and Excel document can be changed. And we do not want anything that the supplier slash vendor 
uploading to the city to be altered in any way. So that's why we need it to be sent to us as a PDF, okay? Last slide, do you have tips to submit an invoice successfully? Um, it is critical to read your purchase order or your contract to understand the terms and conditions relating to invoicing and payment. Also make sure that the review, the setting of the purchase order or contract in the supplier portal. You want to be able to understand how to invoice the city correctly. You can also submit a sample invoice to your point of contact in the department purchasing goods or services so that you can obtain a pre-approval so that all of that information that we just discussed before, make sure that all of that is on there before you start submitting your first invoice. It's very important to remain in communication with the department that you are servicing. They can monitor the payment process and update you. You also want to know if there is a new person in the department to contact. Finally, do not forget to submit your invoice in a timely manner. Now, Julianne is going to address an important question. Do I need a purchase order or a contract to get paid? Thank you, Frida. Um, so I think that uh, this question is, is critical and it may be obvious, but uh, we want to drive uh, the answer to that question to you in a way that um, uh, is important for you to, to remember. So um, the two reasons why you need a purchase order or contract to get paid is that one, obtaining this document, this is a legally binding document that confirms that the city has set aside the money to pay for the good or services that they ordered that it was approved by the necessary approvals at the city level. And this, with this document in hand, it gives you a comfort that you will get paid by the city. Otherwise, without this document, there is absolutely no way to ensure that you're gonna get paid. And let me explain to you as, a, as, a, as an example. I had, I'm the head of the Bureau of Purchasing. If tomorrow I need to buy business cards for a new employee, I could obviously um, uh, pick up the phone, call your office and say, sell business cards, I need a new business card for a new employee that's going to start pretty soon. Um, can you give me a quote and can we get started if, if I uh, agree with the quote and, and I'm good with the sample you gave me? Um, so let's go through this process where I get the quote from you. I'm okay with it. We just have the, the sample, it's fine. I give you the information, you put that on the business card. So um, either via email or via call, I tell you to pursue, to continue with the order and, um, and just let us know when you'll deliver and then we'll, we'll work on the payment. This scenario that I'm presenting to you is problematic to the both of us. For me, obviously it's problematic because in that way I did not secure a purchase order I did not confirm that I have the funding to pay for this business card. Um, I never got any approval or some, uh, whatsoever uh, to do that. And that could be problematic to you because once you're gonna deliver the goods, the business cards to me, you're obviously gonna try to submit the invoice in a portal, but because there's no purchase order, you cannot submit it. So obviously you're gonna come to me and submit the invoice to me, but because I didn't do the purchase order in the first place, um, I'm going to have to go and start that process, which is going to delay the payment. But eventually, it could be an issue where I don't even have the money to pay for it. And, or I have the money, but somebody is going to disapprove this. And that's going to be an issue for you because you thought that I had the authority to do it as a representative of the city. And uh, maybe we've done business in the past or maybe... You know, it was the first time we're doing business and you thought that um, as a head of purchasing, it would, you know, be um, um, authorized to, to do those purchases. But irrespective of my position, irrespective of the, the communication that we have, or if we know each other, if we've done business before, it is critical to get this purchase order or this contract in your hand so that it's a confirmation that the order has been approved and if delivered, and if I do the receiver, especially if it's good, you will be able to submit your invoice and get paid. 
outside of that, you know, that protection of this document, you may not be able to recover from the city. You may have to go to against me personally to get paid because I may tell you, I didn't have the authority to do it. So it's critical to have this document in your hands to render services or to provide goods. The other reason why you need this document is because the system that we have, RAS and the supplier portal, are uh, meant to be connected by a purchase order or a contract. So imagine for a moment that we are uh, two rooms, you are in one room, I'm on the other in the other room, and there's a door, an access door to each other's room. Until I create a purchase order, I cannot open that door, which is an um, 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 ability for me to give you the information that you need to place the order and to get the goods or services that I need. This purchase order, this contract is the key to open that door between your room and my room. And once that's open, then we can transact where I can um, tell you what I need. You can um, deliver the goods or render the services that I asked, and then you can submit the invoice. It's purchase order and the contract are, are connectors between your account, the supply account, and our internal platform. So if you don't have those documents, um, obviously, as I said earlier, the payment, the order can be disputed by the city or can be denied if I don't have the funds to pay for it. But if it's approved, if I have the money, but I haven't done the process of creating the purchase order, it's gonna delay and the process of getting the purchase order and getting your payment release. So please do not provide goods or render services without a purchase order or contract. This is really, really critical for you all to understand that those, this document, whether it's a purchase order or contract, are a critical to our relationship and to make sure that uh, we do business in accurate, safe, protected way and that you get paid obviously timely. So on that note, um, we are going to transition to part two, which is now an opportunity to uh, see how we submit an invoice through the uh, supplier portal. Um, so through uh, part two, we're gonna answer the basic questions such as what is brass? What are the features of the supplier portal? How do I submit an invoice via the supplier portal? And how are invoice and DBE connected? The first two questions have been answered in prior presentation. Um, so sorry for, um, for the attendees who have, have been in session one, session two, both or one or the other, you've, you've gone through that, but for everybody who is new here today, BRAS stands for Budget Requisition and Accounting Services System. This is a new financial platform that the city launched in June, 2019. We had about four to five legacy system that we combined into one. This new platform is critical for us for supplier management, bidding opportunities, purchase order and contract, as I mentioned, invoice submission, as Ms. Richardson mentioned earlier, and payment release as well. The supply portal is the external interface of brass with individuals and entity like you who wish to do business with the city. Uh, what are the features of the supply portal? Um, you have an automated event addendum notification. So when the city uh, posts an event on the supplier portal and the city makes modification to an event, which is typically done through my office when we post an addendum that is um, posted and, and done through the supplier portal, which release a notification to, to uh, suppliers who have been connected to the community code of that event. It's free enrollment, quick enrollment, um, session one, we showed you how to enroll. It really takes uh, five to seven minutes, as Mr. Nika West uh, mentioned during the presentation, and you have a 24 seven access. It's self-enrollment and account maintenance. Um, it makes your company visible to city departments. We just started this year to create a supply directory, um, and we will continue that effort in the second semester of this year, which is to um, contact a supplier and ask them few questions that they can help introduce themselves, their business. This directory will be built to um, and develop to and distribute it to all city departments so they know who is in the supply community for the uh, for city of New Orleans. Uh, it allows online responses instead of submitting paper. 
Um, this is required for an award to an event. If we post an event on Supplier Portal, we award it through the system. And it's also required for payment. So how do I submit an invoice? This is the part where we are going to um, uh, use our test environment to show you the steps. Uh, the scenario here is that um, um, I'm the uh, sales representative for a company called Test LLC. On Tuesday, um, Test LLC submitted a proposal to an ITQ, which is an invitation to, to court. that was um, issued by the Bureau of Purchasing. They were looking to purchase about 20 executive chairs for their office. And I submitted a, a prepared and submitted a proposal through the supplier portal as shown on Tuesday. Um, we won the um, invitation to the lowest bidder and uh, uh, city has awarded um, the invitation to go to uh, uh, test LLC. We received a PO and now I informed our county representative, Ms. Tanika West, uh, who is gonna um, access the, uh, the account to submit an invoice against that purchase order. So now I'm gonna, um, uh, I'm gonna unshare my screen and let Ms. Tanika West take over. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you, Julian, for the introduction. I am Tanika West. I am a part of the Bureau of Purchasing and I provide support to our suppliers and vendors who have uh, received the purchase order and or contract from the city. And I support them in uploading the information into Brads. So I am going to share my screen. So the screen that I am displaying is the uh, City of New Orleans homepage. This is where our suppliers would access their profiles and uh, get into the BRAS system. At this point, the supplier, as Julian mentioned, has received the purchase order, received the contract. And so now we are ready to upload the invoice into the portal. So any supplier can access this site from the World Wide Web by going to the city's landing page, www.nola.gov. And in the middle of the, middle of the screen, there's a option that says bids and contracts. And the link that's listed takes you directly to the brass supplier portal. Once the welcome page opens for brass, and I apologize, it's a little slow, we'll see the, uh, of course, the acronym and the meaning of BRAS. There are some helpful links, some how-to guides on this site. Uh, since I am uploading an invoice or creating an invoice against a PO, I would, of course, download the, uh, the how-to guide. It's a PDF document. Each supplier can download all of this information, save them to your devices. It's user-friendly and, of course, you can use this guidance to upload into the system. So now that I'm ready to sign in, as Julian mentioned, uh, my company is Test LLC. I will just click the gray icon of the man in the top right corner. And I will be given the option to sign in or of course register if you have not completed your registration but in this instance we would sign in so once the vendor signs in you would get to this loading page one second okay so I have signed in, this is my portal. My name appears at the top right corner as the user that is designated by Test LLC to upload invoices on behalf of the company. Once you get into your registration, there may be a series of questions that are listed on the supplier portal. These are security questions that can be used for future uh, lockouts of the portal. These questions are to be answered by the supplier and if you have not answered the questions this would always appear upon logging in until you actually answer one and save it and in the future if you've ever 
forgotten your password, there is an option to click forgot password. And one of these questions will show up. The question that you chose will show up in the, in the window and you can of course answer the question and get a password reset. Okay, so now that I know that I have answered the challenge of the city, received the purchase order, I have an invoice that I'm ready to submit. I would now use this feature called order management. Order management is where all the financial transactions are listed with the city of New Orleans if the vendor has existing transactions. This feature is where you can create invoices. Of course, this is where you upload them. Also, you can view your purchase orders that you have received from the city. So I would like to see my purchase order received. So I would select the option orders. Once orders is selected, a dashboard of course would display. And this dash, dashboard just simply, simply gives an overview of the entire purchase order, what the city owes this particular vendor. It has some detailed information, of course, the total amount, the date the purchase orders was issued, and it gives a brief description of what was ordered. And it looks like it was executive chairs. And I have confirmed with my colleagues that these chairs have been sent. The city is pleased. And now that I'm ready, now that we are ready to upload our invoice. There's another tab next to the dashboard tab, which will list open orders. From this list, if your company has any existing purchase orders with the city, it will display in this window. If a supplier logs onto their portal and visits the order management orders tab and does not see their purchase order displayed, that means the city has not fully executed your purchase order and all contract, and you should reach out to the respective department that requested the desired services. But you wanna be sure you check this window as a housekeeping responsibility and assure that the purchase order has been issued. And I can see here visually that my purchase order number is 25110 in the amount of $2,000. And the status of this uh, purchase order is emailed. There's a courtesy notification sent to suppliers who have designated an email address in their registration and the purchase order notification is automatically sent to the supplier once the PO is issued. Okay, so I have identified my PO in this window and now I'm ready to upload my invoice. So I will, of course, as I mentioned, order management is where all financial transactions occur. We will hit the menu and in order to submit invoices, we will select create invoices, the create invoices option. From this create invoice screen, there are three selections that a supplier can make based upon the type of invoice submission that they're performing. There are three options, expense, PO match and service contract. And for the sake of the invoice that I'm uploading, I will select PO match because on the previous screen, I just identified the PO that the, I was invoicing the city for with the purchase order. The first field that requires an entry is the invoice number field. The company 100 field is a standard field and cannot be manipulated. It's standard for the city of New Orleans brass application. The first field that requires an entry from the supplier and or vendor is the invoice number field. And my invoice number would be number one. And the third field or the second field purchase order, this is where you would enter your purchase order that was issued by the city. But we don't manually type in the purchase order. We select the magnifier, and all existing POs on behalf of my company or the supplier and our vendor's company would display. And you would only select the purchase order that you are invoicing at this time. And of course, as I mentioned, PO 25110 is the purchase order that I will be selecting. We just take our cursor, tap on the purchase order number, it auto-populates in the field. 
The next field that requires information is a description field. In this field, you would just enter the services you provided to the city. And for this invoice, I entered just the executive chairs in which we provided to the city. The invoice date is very important as Ms. Richardson and Julian also co-signed is the invoice date. The invoice date is required because of the reconciliation that accounting does with the information you're actually entering in the system. So the invoice date should mirror the document that you're going to attach. And I am just going to pull up my document. which has to be in PDF as was mentioned previously. And as I open up the document, I just want to make sure that I have the correct date that I'm entering in the system, which is today's date. There's a little calendar that is inside the field. You can select the calendar date. The due date field is entered here. Of course, the city is net 30. So this would be uh, 30 days from today. So I would, of course, filter the calendar for June 27th. And the invoice amount, if you all remember from the brief snapshot of the invoice, is $2,000. So you would enter the full value of the invoice here. Now, the next field is the attach image field. And of course, you would be driven to your device to pull that PDF image. And save it to your record. And once all the information in the fields are displayed, you will just be able to verify to make sure that there's data in each of the fields. And the image is attached. There is a proof of delivery option. That option is not required. And this option is for most of our vendors who have packing slips. Sometimes those vendors can upload those proof of delivery packing slips by using this option. And once all the information is entered, the supplier or vendor can click next. Okay. So now this, the supplier will see the create invoice or the purchase order line information screen. From this screen, there's the option to the left that the supplier will select the gray button that says create detail from PO line. This, this information or this feature opens up the PO so that you will be able to select the information so that it will interface with the accounting team. So we would open up and create the detail. Another window will show up, the available purchase order lines information. And this is where the line information is listed with all the suggested features from your purchase order. You would just take your cursor, put a check mark next to the number one, select the blue button, create detail from PO line. And once the line information disappears, the supplier would hit close. Now we see displayed the actual information from the purchase order. We have our executive chairs. We have delivered, my company has provided uh, 20 chairs to the city at $100 each. And the total function amount of these items total $2,000. So everything looks good here. It matches my invoice that I'm submitting. I will now just click next on this feature. And the final overview of the invoicing will display. And the supplier is suggested through our portal guides to click the gray submit button to complete this submission. 
and a window is gonna drop up very quickly from the top, follow an action submitted, submit completed successfully. So now that we have submitted this invoice, we can always verify what we have just accomplished in the BRAS portal. Of course, again, you would always return to the order management feature, which houses all the financial transactions. And now you will select the single word invoices. And of course, this is a snapshot of the invoicing on the dashboard tab of the invoice that you have just submitted. But if the supplier would like to see all invoices that have been entered on behalf of their company into the portal, I would suggest selecting the next tab, all, which displays the invoice with all the information that you've just entered. The invoice number, the purchase order that it is uh, invoiced against, the status unreleased, which these uh, statuses are updated by the accounting team, but upon entering into the portal, the status will be unreleased. Of course, it shows your, the invoice date, the due date, the amount, and your image. Sometimes suppliers uh, may have making the mistake of uploading an incorrect image. So this is for verification. You guys can open up the image just to assure that this is the image that you would like the city to see. And once the invoice is submitted, uh, I suggest uh, to our suppliers uh, just creating a dialogue with their department, informing the department that the uh, submission has been completed, just to continue that dialogue. And if there are any issues with this invoice submission, the accounting team reaches out to the, de the department. Accounting reaches out to the department. I should say that again, because the dialogue that has to happen is between the supplier and the vendor and the department that requested the services. So we recommend our suppliers to communicate with their departments and the departments will communicate with accounting if there are any issues with this invoice submission. Uh, and um, Julian, did you want me to show anything else or was that pretty much covering the submission of an invoice? Well, thank you, Tanika. I guess you, you could go to the, the tab called paid. I just want to um, make sure that they also uh, a supply community understand that once your, um, once your, your payment has been issued and, and released to you, that's where you can see a, um, a build up list of all the, uh, the payment that you've received. So that helps you also um, uh, gather some information through your account, supplier account. Okay. Yes, as Julian mentioned, there are several tabs, a part of the order management feature. And as a supplier gets an award, uh, want to view events, want to look at a view, any type of financial information, the order management tab is the go-to tab to take care of any of those that those financial records so that as a company, reconciliation can happen as well. If you want to track your payments, which the Dropbox will show the payments option. So once a payment is issued, the supplier will be able to view the all payments tab. The accounting team would have issued a payment number, a payment amount. There will be an option to view the payment and you would be able to determine if it was an ACH or a system check issued for that payment. And as I stated before, the auto management tab works for our suppliers and our vendors who are completing their financial transactions when invoice in the city and they are always allowed to go back and forward to view the orders, invoices, and payments, and of course, upload the invoices to the system using that feature. And that is my piece of submitting invoices. If anyone would like to reach out to the purchasing team regarding uploading invoices, please email procurement.braz at nola.gov. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tanika. I'm gonna... Uh, take over your screen 
and uh, continue uh, our presentation, um, which um, uh, as you will see on the slide now, um, is about the connection between the invoice and NDB and the colleagues from the supplier diversity uh, office. So um, colleagues and supplier diversity have access to BRAS, to our internal platform um, to um, take a look at the uh, invoices that have been submitted and, and paid to uh, a DB uh, community. But um, once, once the, the, the invoice is submitted as a, uh, Tanika showed you that invoice is coming into the world of accounts payable, who will then, as Ms. Richardson said earlier, apply a different type of uh, matching approval processes, um, depending on whether buying goods or services. In our scenario, we were delivering goods, executive chairs to the Bureau of Purchasing. So the responsibility on the Bureau of Purchasing in that scenario would be to go into the internal system in brass and enter a receiver, uh, which is uh, a, a, an action of telling the system that the Bureau of Purchasing has received the chairs. And that uh, obviously by receiving, we explain what we received and how much. And that receiver is part of that three-way match that accounts payable, colleague from accounts payable will apply to that purchase. And if your invoice is submitted correctly, everything has been uh, has been provided and then uh, accounts payable will process uh, this payment for night 30 from the date of your invoice. And then all those invoices and payments in the system can be accessed by our colleagues from supply diversity who can um, monitor and see what, what payment are being uh, processed for primes as well for DBEs. But um, the new feature that um, we've been actively working on is to link our financial platform with the uh, platform that Supply Diversity is using for, for monitoring uh, the DBE program. On that note, we're gonna go to part three, uh, DBE uh, monitoring uh, with Matthew. Thank you, Julian. Yes, we're uh, hoping to have that uh, feature um, up and running um, by July. And uh, well, well, hopefully that, that'll, that'll help with a lot of uh, knowing when, when folks are paid and when we expect to see compliance. And so again, um, as I had stated in our previous sessions, all vendors are required to adhere to the city's equitable business opportunities program found in section 70-456 to 70-467 of the code of ordinances and the DBE policy found within policy memorandum number 46. OSD reviews post-bid DBE compliance forms for compliance with the EBO program and DBE policy and validates the vendor's commitment to the DBE goal. Vendors are required to conform to their established uh, DBE commitment as validated by OSD and good faith efforts shall be monitored throughout the life of the contract. All vendors are required to, oh, what happened? Oh, <laughs> that's, that's, that's my fault. I had, uh, um, you should be on slide 27. Yes, that's correct. Uh, once a contract has been awarded and is active, the Office of Supply Diversity will enter the contract into the DBE Compliance Monitoring System, B2G Now. Vendors will receive their initial compliance letter noting the established DBE commitment, DBE subcontractors, and overview of the monthly reporting requirements. Vendors are required to provide a point of contact that will be responsible for reporting the monthly audits and maintaining records of DBE participation for the contract. It is the responsibility of the vendor to immediately notify the DBE subcontractor in writing of the date when their contractual obligation is to begin and to provide a copy to the Office of Supply Diversity. Changes to the established percentage or DBE subcontractors submitted on the DBE Compliance Form 1, that's the form we use to issue the validation, 
does require approval from OSD. Any substitution or replacement of a DBE subcontractor must be done by a DBE compliance form four and approved by OSD. Um, vendors are responsible for ensuring continued DBE participation on all subcontractor tier levels. The DBE contract goal shall continue throughout the life of the contract, and this does include contract amendments or change orders. Prior to the approval of any contract amendment or change order, the DBE Compliance Form 6 will need to be completed to demonstrate how any changes to the contract value affect DBE subs and ensure continued commitment to the established DBE percentage. So, as I stated earlier, uh, you do have to submit monthly contract audits regarding payments to both the prime and to the subs. In this case, we are calling the prime the vendor. The city pays the vendor. The vendor receives an email indicating there is an audit that is due. The vendor logs into the system and confirms payment and reports all their payments to their subs. The subcontractor receives an email indicating there's an audit they must respond to and the subcontractor will log in and confirm the payment. They may also find if, issue a discrepancy if they find that there is a difference from what they got paid and what is reported. Otherwise, the audit is complete for the period and the cycle continues for each payment until the contract is complete. We also have regular monthly reminders uh, and so when that occurs and there has been no payment, the prime is expected to enter in the zero dollar amounts if that is the case. All compliance audits are done within our DBE system, which is at neworleans.dbesystem.com. This is the uh, login page. This is what the dashboard looks like uh, from the vendor view. Uh, you'll see on here there's several uh, windows. The notable part is under where it says dashboard and you can see there's contracts and contract audits and you can use those as links to get to your contracts and report in your contract audits. This would be a view uh, for a vendor if they have multiple contracts and they can go to each one to make sure that they are updating their current list of subs and current payment to subs. And this again is the compliance audit list for each month. You would click the month uh, to report what was paid in for that month. And again, this would be where you enter what you were paid from the city for that month. Again, it's the payment date that you were paid. Not the day you invoiced the city, but the day you were paid. And then this is where you would submit what you paid your subcontractors and indicating the value, the payment date, and most importantly, if it was a prompt payment. Uh, that's uh, within 15 days of you receiving payment. And then we ask for you to put enter in detail such as the check number so that way that can be confirmed. Thank you. Compliance officers may conduct announced and unannounced vi site visits to monitor the contract compliance in the field. And vendors shall maintain communication with the compliance officer regarding their DBE subcontractors and any issues or concerns from either the vendor or the DBE firm should be communicated with supplier diversity. Now, if there is non-compliance, we do issue notices of non-compliance and failure to comply with the EBO ordinance or DBE policy may be subject to corrective action which may include, but need not be limited to, withholding of any or all portions of payments due to the vendor until the non-compliance is cured, liquidated damages, termination of any or all of the vendor's contracts with the city, suspension, debarment, determination, or determination of non-responsibility. Now, I do realize some of these might be extreme, but do remember that the DBE, adhering to the DBE policy is part of your contract. And we want to make sure 
that you are adhering to your EB order, EBO ordinance and DB policy accordingly. This is our compliance team. We have Andre Brown, Latoya Martin, myself, Matthew Cullinan, and Monique Bourgeois. Thank you, Julien. I turn it back to you. Thank you very much, Matthew. Um, sorry for uh, moving the page up and down too quickly. Apologize about that. Um, so conclusion of this session um, is uh, that we uh, prepared you to understand the payment process. We prepare you to submit an invoice, and then we prepare you to understand DBE compliance and reporting. Um, do not forget that on um, all those like three parts presentation, we um, try to show you how to register and become a new supplier, to get certified as a DBE if eligible, to monitor and respond to a solicitation, to submit a DBE plan if applicable, to obtain a purchase order or contract prior to deliver goods or render services, to submit your invoice timely and accurately, and finally, to comply with DB compliance and reporting. Uh, we are now going to uh, start the uh, question and answer sessions. Uh, Ms. Margaret? Yes. So do anyone have any questions at this time? Uh, let me check the chat box here. No questions at all. Well, what are you, um, what are you thinking about your your question? And uh, I'm sure you will have some for us. There's another opportunity to reach out to us, as I will pull the uh, presentation back again. But um, you can obviously submit your question and comments to procurement.brass.nola.gov. Um, this is uh, an email address that we use to uh, interact with our suppliers. Uh, whether it's for resetting passwords or issue invoice submission. But with this presentation that we did, I uh, wanted to give you an opportunity to um, um, submit it, submit a question or a comment or anything that we, uh, uh, we could use to improve not only our presentation, our processes, information to help you uh, do business with us. So um, I'm going to pull the, the screen again to show you the information. Okay, so if we don't have any questions at this time, uh, we'll go ahead and this will conclude uh, today's session. I wanna thank our speakers for being here today. Uh, Julian, Ms. Frieda Richardson, Matthew Cullinan and Tanika West for those informative uh, presentations that they provided. Um, I have added all emails of those that registered for um, any of the sessions to my database. Um, I will let you guys know when I schedule any other uh, business sessions throughout the year. In the meantime, if you have any uh, business related questions, don't hesitate to contact me. I'll do my best to assist you. So at this time, if no one else have anything to say, we'll go ahead and close out the meeting. Thank you all very much. Thank you for attending this presentation and thank you for my colleagues to uh, conclude uh, this three day event. Thank you. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Margaret, for hosting this. You're welcome. Thank you. Yes.